Okay, we've probably all seen it, but let's just lay it out there. That black and white first kiss video with all the hipsters making out, kinda hard not to watch. It amassed 48 million views in about two weeks, just by pairing up attractive supposed strangers to kiss for the very first time. Now, regardless of whether the kissers were actually actors or what the video was trying to sell, it seems to have reminded the whole internet that kissing it's kinda hot. And we've talked about kissing before here on SciShow. Aside from viral marketing, it seems to be good for a number of things, among them letting us get a big, close whiff of a potential mate. Seriously though, biologists think that kissing allows us to pick up intimate chemical cues from other people that tells us whether they're a good match for baby making. The theory is, we can actually smell proteins we all have that are associated with our specific immune systems. It's called the Major Histocompatibility Complex, or MHC, and it's the closest thing there is to real human pheromones. We tend to be attracted to people with different MHCs than our own. The thinking is that people with immune systems that complement ours will lead to healthier offspring. Now whether that's what we're actually seeing in the first video, I can't say. But of course, kissing also just feels good. Humans are the only animals with fully exposed lips, and they're packed with about a hundred times more nerve endings than our fingertips. When stimulated, those nerves can trigger the release of dopamine, oxytocin, and serotonin, chemicals that allow us to feel physical pleasure. So it just makes sense that kissing would be you know, exciting. But the study of kissing, it never stops. You'd be surprised. In a recent study at Oxford University, psychologists went deep into how people really use that first kiss and the kisses that come after it. They interviewed 900 adults of all ages and in different kinds of relationships about how often they kiss and when and why and what it did for them. Results confirmed that psychologically as well as biologically, kissing seems to be important for mate selection. The more selective that people said they were and the more attractive they thought they were, the more they said that kissing was was important to them. But smooching was even more important as a way of maintaining long-term relationships. For example, people linked more frequent kissing with having a better relationship, but this was not the case for having more sex. Funny thing is, few people seem to actually think that kissing was arousing, and they tended not to associate it with the act of sex itself. Now, for many creatures, from hamsters to horses, springtime is the official season of love. Here in the Northern Hemisphere, it began with the vernal equinox March 20th around 11 a.m. Eastern Time. You'll note, that the equinox is not a day. It's a specific point in time when the center of the sun crosses the plane of the Earth's equator, sometimes called the celestial equator. And even though the name equinox, Latin for equal night, suggests that day and night are the same length everywhere, that is not true either. That happens at different times in different parts of the world, depending on your latitude. What's particularly interesting about this year's vernal equinox is that from now on, and for the rest of the century, it will fall on either March 19th or March 20th. Back in the 20th century, Century, it often fell on the 21st, which is why a lot of people just assume that March 21st is always the first day of spring. But it will not fall on the 21st again until well into the 22nd century. Why? Well, the main reason is that the Earth's orbit actually takes 365.242 days to complete, while the calendar year has only 365. So as years pass, our calendars keep getting behind by a fraction of a day. That's why we have leap years to help reset our calendars to match with physical reality. The year 2000 was a bonus leap year. That happens only once every 400 years because it was a century year that was divisible by 400, and that helped move the equinox up, which is what we're seeing now. But the year 2100 will not be a leap year. So Without that extra day, the equinox will start pushing back to March 21st around 2102. So, you know, plan accordingly. Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow News brought to you by Audible.com, which is giving away a free audiobook to SciShow viewers. Head on over to audiblepodcast.com slash SciShow, where you can download A Tale of Seven Elements, one of the best new science books of 2013. In 1917, we figured out how to count up elements by their atomic number, 1 to 92, but seven of them were missing. Those seven elements took over 40 years to discover. A Tale of Seven Elements will lead you through a scientific mystery like no other. You can also get, like, practically any other book and listen to it for free. So go to audiblepodcast.com slash scishow. And if you have any questions or comments, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter and in the comments below. And if you want to keep getting smarter with us here at SciShow, you can go to youtube.com slash scishow and subscribe.